I usually start like this. Whoa, look at that. All right, we're here at EV West. This is like, this is the research and development of custom electric cars. This is the place we're here at Merritt. How's it going? All right. And uh, he's gonna give us a tour of uh, this r ridiculous vehicle. This thing has won all kinds of awards. It's done Pike's Peak. I can't even explain. Let's just, let's just look at it for a second. Yeah, this is crazy. So this has a Tesla drivetrain in it. Tesla Model S drivetrain, yes. Wow, can we see that? Yeah, sure, we got that back here. Got the kind of duct tape. Yeah. To see it. Okay. Basically, we Whoa. just were able to extend the cage in the car, make the Tesla Model S driveline fit in here. We're able to modify the drive flanges so we can still use the stock M3 axles. Wow. Oh, so you're using the same axles? Mm -hmm. Same. It's got the same um, cross member in there, mm -hmm. the rear subframe, and all we did is basically modify the mounts in the front, modify the mount in the rear. Oh, that's cool. And then we were able to cut the Tesla flange and then weld the M3 flange onto it. Yeah. So now it's got basically a Tesla internal for the drive, for the transmission part, and then an M3 outer flange so we can just run M3 axles. Wow, no kidding, that's great. Good engineering. They always do something like, they always try and keep the car stock, right? This is the idea. Yeah, Like Red right Hanos is like a beautiful Porsche. They're not gonna cut it up. They're gonna make just, just go electric. That's it, right? Make that's everything fit, everything bolt on to where if you wanted to, don't know why you would, but change it back to gas. Right. There's no major modifications. It keeps the nostalgia look of the car. It keeps everything classic, so you're not having to hack anything up. Nice. And then the cool thing about it is uh, uh, they usually do at least double the horsepower. Mm -hmm. So it, this is not just, oh, I'm trying to go electric. No, you're trying to get more performance yeah. out of the same car. Yeah, our, our main goal is basically either match or outperform the factory performance, because mm -hmm. you're not gonna wanna take Porsche and make it slower. Right. So you always wanna go, above and beyond yeah and they do all their own bracketry like i guess this piece right here this was mm -hmm. water jetted or whatever mm -hmm. and then they weld it in and this is a cage and then now which side is the motor and which is the controller so that's going to be the motor over there on the left okay and over here is going to be the controller and inverter and then okay. the, basically the differentials attached right in the middle then there's that's it the, that's one gear right mm -hmm. so one gear transmission and then your then all your oh and then there's your half shaft yep. here and then those are stock, you're saying? The, basically, the axle itself yeah. and the CV joint is factory M3, okay. factory BMW. Right. And then we, like I said, we adapted the flange. Oh. So we welded the M3 flange onto the spline part that oh. goes into the differential. Cool. We welded that, so it's kind of a... Hybrid. You know, it's a hybrid, yeah. Interesting. Very cool. Wow. And then we're also we're using uh, 12 of the LG Chem. Just so, wait, while we're here, look up. This is kind of a good example of what's going on here. This would be, is this the stock transmission? Stock, stock force transmission, yes. So this is the transmission. Here's your half shaft. This is a great example. Like, right, all this, the lighting is good, too. And then this is just, this is how Porsche did it. And then right here would have been horizontally opposed, what they call the Boxster or horizontal engine. Would have been, it would have been a cylinders here and cylinders here. And instead, you got... You got the electric motor. Is it AC fifty one or something? A, that's an AC. It's a, basically it's a prototype motor, so it's technically an AC sixty. Oh. It's a high voltage motor. Oh. So they've only done the one, and Trent put it in his car. Okay. Um, but yeah, essentially it's the same size as an AC fifty, so nine inch motor. Right. Thirteen inches long. Right. And then this is your custom adapter. Yeah. And then the, they got you guys machine that here, or you send Not it in house. We send it out. But we you design it. it here, yes. yeah, they design it. Cool. And then that's basically what happens. Mike, just in time, I've given a, a YouTube tour of the oh, stuff. Tour? And you're going over like that you leave the cars basically stock, but you yeah. you you bring the performance yeah, way yeah, up. It's funny because I just got an email on this and the guy, his train of thought was, I want it to be as simple as possible, so I'm gonna do a direct drive system. And what he didn't realize is to keep it as simple and as clean as possible, you actually just want to maintain the stock drive line, the stock transmission, right. the clutch, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. If you went with a direct drive, I don't even know what you would do. I think some people are getting differentials from other cars, old 34s uh. and things out of old E36 BMWs and stuff. 
they change the ratio, but then they have to fabricate like a subframe and a mount and mm. custom axles, sometimes custom hubs and spindles. And the whole thing just turns into this huge project. And at the end of the day, you can maintain all of the value in the car and the stock nature by just retaining the clutch. Right, so like... Just by doing a bell housing yeah. adapter and motor. But I think the concept, like in their head, they think that there's all this complication in a stock gearbox. Hmm. And though that might be true, it's complication that you don't have to worry about. That right. was engineered like 20 years ago. Right, years right. Ago or whatever. And so why cause extra engineering? Why right. all of a sudden you're going to try, you know, you've never done this in your life and all of a sudden you're going to like mount yep. some new third member in the back of a 50 year old German car. Mm -hmm. It's just not going to look pretty. And it's going to totally take away from the value of the car, right? Like the resale value. You, you know, know, you know, it's so. funny. It's like um, uh, sometimes, well, like when I meet new students and or mm -hmm. projects, and they like already tore apart their car, right. and they're like, "Oh, I'm doing this thing," and I say, "Okay, so so let me get this straight. They're, that company's been around for a hundred years. Yeah. They have." generations of engineers yeah. Yeah. and then their kids and then their kids cousins and friends got jobs and then they became and then all the way up to the point where you got the car and you're like no nah, we'll just scrap just that scrap it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, the, the thing is you can't fault anyone for these ideas because yeah. this is so new that you the, the free thinkers are the ones that are doing well right uh, right but you, you just have to assess it and i guess my my point is is it's not uh, a default like direct drives easier. Mm. You know, there's some cases and there's some situations where, uh, you know, like with the pickup trucks where you actually put like the whole Tesla subframe in. Wow. And that's not something we would openly suggest, but it's definitely a possibility. There's these other kind of avenues, you know, and it's really just matching like what the performance they want, how open they are to modifying their vehicle, also with their budget. Right. Know? And if you really want to keep a stock car and you want to keep the budget really tight, but still have all the performance, it's mm -hmm. a no-brainer. Just keep the stock driving. Yeah. You, know? uh, you do reach a power point with the old stuff, and when we build the trannies, we use American-made gears, well cut gears, things like that. But you know, ultimately, that gearbox was only intended for, let's say, you know, 200 foot-pounds of torque. And okay. You beyond that, now you're going to start getting into uh, you know the next step would be performance aftermarket solutions oh sure right that's so like next step and then after that you're on to the mendela sequential race training or something i don't know <laughs> so like this here could be you could get like let's say a, a high performance race vw transmission yeah, I mean, well this is a porsche right oh, okay so yeah all sorts of transmission shops that sell right aftermarket performance transmissions Porsches. But then everything's yeah. in the same place. So your yeah. your mounts. I mean, as big as our industry is, the actual aftermarket transmission industry for Porsches is probably bigger. Yeah. Right, right, <laughs> right, right, right. It's just like, they're, they're, yeah, that makes sense. For years, we're kind of new. Yeah. Um, cool. But yeah, there's a lot of solutions. But the reality is, is you can make a Porsche uh, much faster than its combustion engine, mm -hmm. and still utilize the stock driver. So that's the happy zone. Right. More power, but mm -hmm. not too much that you have to do like wholesale driving. And changes. also some of the cars you improve the handling capability yeah. just by placement of batteries and oh, sure. this ballast. You know, it actually makes them handle a little bit better. Nice. Cool. All right. That was a good overview beginning. Are you, are you YouTube live? Well, I, not live, but okay. I, this is like... So but, we can edit. You can edit. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, that was a good intro though. That was kind of like the intro to EV West video. So I'll, I'll end it there. Hey, how long are you in town for?